Hi Inkulator, it's Victoria here, and today I'm going to be sharing 5 tips to improve your songwriting. So you'll notice I just used the name Inquilators. Um, if you hate that, follow me on Twitter at Inquillery because we're going to be doing a poll to choose the name and there are some other options. So um, follow me on Twitter if you want to have a say in that. So as you guys know, I am a songwriter. Um, at least in theory, I have no formal credentials, um, but you've listened to my songs here on YouTube, so, um, you know, at least I have some kind of experience. Um, but again, I have no training formally, so you can feel free to just completely ignore all of these tips if you don't think that they're helpful. However, if you're interested in hearing a bit about my process and some tips I use to improve my songs, um, then keep watching and apply these to your own. Number one, match your melody to the lyrics or conversely, match your lyrics to the melody. So depending on what your intent is in writing the song, you wanna make sure that your musical story and your lyrical story are the same. So, for example, with Queen of the Castle, if you guys have listened to that one, um, it's from Queen Maeve's perspective, so it's obviously super creepy and she's a nasty, <laughs> evil queen. So I tried to make the song sound as creepy and eerie as possible. If you're going for a more um, heart-wrenching sort of sound, you want to make sure your melody also evokes that kind of longing and sadness. Not the most mind-blowing of tips, but uh, you'd be surprised how many times you'll hear a song that's supposed to be sad but yet uses mostly major chords and doesn't really evoke that, or vice versa. There is a trick as well though in um, making a melody that deliberately doesn't match your lyrics as like more of a shock thing. A nursery rhyme sound with really dark lyrics can be effective, so different things like that, but I would consider that sort of like next level. Make sure in your first step that in your most basic song, your lyrics match the melody you're portraying. Number two, tell a story. Not all songs tell stories, but personally I think that the best ones do. So a couple of tricks that I use for that um, is that your chorus is kind of like your main theme or the main point you want people to take away. Um, and yet it should work for every single part of the song. So first one should introduce your story, first two should take it to the next step. If you have a bridge, your bridge should take it even further, one step further. Um, and yet your chorus stays the same throughout, but somehow provides a new perspective every time. Or the, the development in your story through the verses provides a new perspective on the chorus. So you want to make sure you have lyrics that match the progression of your story from beginning to end, but yet um, can stay consistent and we gain a new sort of perspective on it every time we hear a new verse. We, we are looking at that chorus story in a new way. Number three, have a hook. So this can be either musical or lyrical or both together is ideal. Um, so musically it needs to be something catchy, something that gets stuck in your head, and lyrically it should be one image or phrase that also gets stuck in your head. <laughs> this lyric should also be able to summarize your entire story. So your chorus is kind of the main bulk theme of your story, and then your hook, which can be the whole chorus in some cases, or one line of the chorus, something repeated, that should capture the entire story, what you're trying to say, in one phrase. So Heart of Steel, for example, with My Heart of Steel would be the hook, um, and that kind of captures Nesta's whole sort of personality. She has a heart of steel. Um, and so as the story progresses, she learns to use that to defend people that she loves, which she, I guess in the beginning, but defend Cassie and who she now loves. Um, but that can also apply just to her without the love aspect. Um, but then as we gain that love story, you can understand that in a new way. Um, so yeah, that sort of summarizes her, but then also effectively summarizes the nature of her love story with Cassian. Number four, use an image, not a statement. So this is kind of a subjective one, um, but I have an example for you to hopefully illustrate what I mean. So a statement would be something like, the way you look makes me sad, I can't let go of what we had. <laughs> That's a statement, not an image. It's a statement of how you're feeling, but it doesn't give you any visual picture of what that looks like. So if we were to change this into um, an image, we might change the way you look makes me sad. So what is it that you're seeing in them? What are you looking at that, that makes you sad? So something like the pride in your stance. The way you look, we change to the image of the pride in your stance. So that kind of uh, conveys strong shoulders, head back, 
condescension, a whole host of emotions um, in that description of someone's stance, which is a more vivid picture of how someone looks. It's more specific. Then makes me sad. What does sad look like? What does it feel like to you? So, ice in my bones. <laughs> sure. So we've changed the way you look makes me sad to the pride in your stance puts ice in my bones. That's a much more evocative picture. It gives us a specific feeling, a specific stance, a specific look um, that carries with it a lot more emotion, not just one, but all sorts, because it, that can also be interpreted in a variety of ways, but it's far more specific to the circumstance than just the way you look makes me sad. So the second line, but I can't let go of what we had, it's not bad, but again, it doesn't carry anything particularly specific to this particular situation. Also, we want to make it rhyme with bones. Stones. <laughs> I'm going with that. Um, I can't let go of what we had. What did we have that I can't let go of? Um, love that doesn't die. Um, stable love. Stones are stable. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> um, uh, I believed in a love more stable than stone. So from the first line, the way you look makes me sad. I can't let go of what we had is now changed to the pride in your stance puts ice in my bones. I believed in a love more stable than stone or stones. Um, depending on how close you want to rhyme, up to you. I don't worry too much about like on point rhymes as long as it sounds similar when you're singing, whatever. Um, but yeah, do you see how the first is a statement that uh, is just simply non-specific description of how you feel how that's changed into an image that is specific to your situation and your particular relationship in that context. Um, so it's much more vivid and will carry your story in a much brighter way that ultimately becomes relatable. I think the weirdest thing about songwriting is that the more specific you are, actually the more universal uh, your image is and the more relatable it is. And then finally, my last tip for you is to tell the truth. Um, this doesn't mean that you can't make up a story in a song, I do it all the time, but it needs to be truthful to humanity, to our emotions, to the things that we experience, and more than that, it should be truthful to you, because if you're writing this song, then it's your voice, even if it's not your story, and you alone have your life experiences and your perspective that's been shaped by those life experiences. Um, you're unique and you're awesome, <laughs> and so don't write a song based on somebody else because we need your voice. And so if it's your song, it's going to be its best if it's yours. Like we could both write a song about, about grief, for example, but it would look very different coming from me with my background and my voice versus your background and your life experiences and your voice. So be truthful to who you are and in your circumstances and the things that you've experienced even when you're writing about something that might be fiction or or is somebody else's story. Um, you're still telling it through your voice and so you should draw on truthful emotions that you felt and truthful experiences you felt even if they're not the same as what the actual lyrics are talking about. Um, you need that element of truth for it to actually feel powerful and relatable. So yes, those are my five tips to improve your songwriting. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Um, also leave a comment if you want more tips like this um, and what kind of songs you're working on. I'd love to hear them someday. Um, so yeah, make your own channel and send them to me. Um, as always, I love you so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!